on this album, Heaven or Las Vegas, the lyrics are actually a bit more intelligible than on their earlier work. And I think this is partly because of some changes in circumstances in the band. So the period before and during the recording of this album was defined by a few key life events. So Robin Guthrie and Liz had a baby girl together called Lucy Bell. Simon Raymond, who I can't believe we haven't mentioned yet, bassist, synth player, composer in the band, amazing musician, he got married, but then also had to endure the death of his father, the composer Ivo Raymond. And then finally, Robin was also becoming increasingly dependent on drugs at this time. So there was a lot going on. And I think, to me, it seems to be setting things up for this mix of euphoria, mourning, this pain, intimacy, cheap drug thrills, but then also more spiritual fulfillment with a child. I think obviously this album is called Heaven or Las Vegas, after all. The duality is pretty clear. So, I mean, Oli, what moments do you think capture the chaotic personal circumstances that surround this record? I'd say, off the top of my head, Ice Blink, Look, or Heaven or Las Vegas. I think probably the fact that they're most, that they're the most comprehensible songs on the album probably plays a part. Like Ice Blink, Look, for example, I don't think there's a Cocteau Twins song where they've ever been more easy to understand just in terms of lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, I think, I think the chorus is something like, you're the match of cherry coal that will burn this whole madhouse down. I mean, number one, what a beautiful image. But yeah. number two, for me anyway, that's a clear reference to Lizzie's child and her relationship with Robin. And I think mm. this, what you've just said there, obviously the record is about being on a knife edge between joy and disaster. And I think mm. this song is obviously, you know, a really true reflection of that. I've got to mention Heaven or Las Vegas. Again, as you say, it's it's kind of, it does what it says on the tin. It's kind of on the title. <clears throat> I'd say this is easily my favorite track on the record. Mm. I think it's one of the most euphoric songs that I've ever heard. I don't know if you agree. Yeah, I think in forms of capturing either a coked up euphoria or a pregnancy induced euphoria, I think Ice Blink Luck and Heaven or Las Vegas are amazing examples. On Ice Blink Luck, there's a moment towards the end when it goes from the chorus into this drum break and it just makes the hairs on you know all on my, on my arms and legs just stand up and i get a similar feeling in the chorus to heaven or las vegas too and i know from that all, all that kind of makes me think is do you know what i mean when i say that cocteau twins are very much like a moments band and i don't mean that to disparage their songs not to disparage their songs as whole entities but then they sometimes just go to places in their music and it makes you feel like you're flying. It's just so euphoric. You know what I mean? Mate, that that heaven, heaven or Las Vegas. Like if you listen to the first thirty seconds of that, you've kind of got like if we're talking about alchemy, for example, you've got all the kind of classic Cocteau Twins elements in there. So you've got mm. you know the guitar, the bass, the drums, Liz's voice. Everything sounding super good, super tight. But then it just goes into fucking hyperdrive in the chorus, mm. into this like glorious crescendo. And like it's, it's as you say, man. The best way to describe it is you feel like you're literally about to take off that song and that chorus you know obviously we're kind of getting towards the end of series one now and i'm kind of thinking in my head okay like what have my favorite songs been across the 10 albums that we've looked at mm. like there's, there's obviously a few that stand out like drone logic didn't you know for sure heaven or las vegas 100 percent would be in my top five like if that was in a royal <laughs> rumble with the other four songs it was sunday serious chance of like making it out on its feet no doubt yeah, I, th I think as well when you, you know, apparently during a recording of, of this album, Fraser would be holding her child, Lucy Bell, in her arms when she was doing the vocal takes. <laughs> really? this image of This image of her recording the chorus to Heaven or Las Vegas while gently rocking this baby, it, it just it sums up everything about this album so amazingly. And I mean, I'm about to like unleash probably one of the more strange comparisons I've made on this podcast, and I've already made some pretty strange ones over this first yeah, series. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this. <laughs> <laughs> but if if I were to say that there's something about this album and this band generally, and we've already talked about this feeling of flying or euphoria, it kind of reminds me both in its sound and in the way it makes me feel of... The soundtrack to Tarzan, the Phil Collins soundtrack, <laughs> which I appreciate is just strange to say, but when I listen to that soundtrack, and you know, whatever you think of Phil Collins, leave that at the door, it has a similar feeling, you know, this idea of like kind of flying through the canopy of a jungle or swinging through the canopy of a jungle, listening to the euphoric moments like on Pitch the Baby or, or, or many of the songs on Heaven Las Vegas. 
it's doing the same thing to me. For some reason, it's the same. It's coming from the same place. <laughs> I'm just imagining you listening to this record, thinking you're Tarzan, swinging through the trees, and <laughs> wrestling a tiger, and saving Jane, and all that stuff. I, but then, yeah, it's a it's a kind of funny, funny analogy. But I do I do get what you're saying. Um, so yeah, yeah, that isn't that isn't as weird as it sounds, Jamie. I'll give you that one. All right, well, yeah, we'll have to see how people react. I can imagine some pretty angry comments, which we will have to respond to at length. But, um, all right, just to, to wrap up, specifically looking at the, the music of the album, do you have some favourite tracks that you want to kind of highlight? I think Cherry Coloured Funk would definitely be up there as well. I'm not sure that Liz sounds better on the album than on this song. Like, I think if you wanted an introduction to Cocteau Twins and specifically to her singing style, then I think this would be a really good example because you've got this like soaring chorus, as you say, like virtuosic chorus, but there's also a really soft kind of underlying side vocal that's going on at the same time. And I think the combination of the two is as lush or as stunning as any of Robin's mad guitar bits. So yeah, that that would definitely get a shout out from me. But yeah, what about you? Um, I feel like I have to... Um, give some credit to some of the more downbeat moments of this record. Um, as we mentioned, this is also an album marked by the come downs of Robin Guthrie, Robin Guthrie's paranoia when he's coming off drugs, and obviously Simon Ramon's father's death as well. So tracks like Road River Rail, Free Free Foxes in Midsummer Fires, uh, Fifty Fifty Clown. I think they're also again just have some absolutely stunning, stunning moments.